everyone. Welcome to our sixth and final Lenten midweek service. I'm happy to report that next week on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, we'll be back here in the sanctuary at 6 p.m. And as this is the final service, we look forward to the future with the coming resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord, always being at the forefront of our minds. With that being said, let us begin with our first hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame, and let not my enemies exult over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. I am by nature sinful and unclean. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. I confess to you all my sins and iniquities to which I have ever offended you. According to your steadfast love, remember me. I have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. For the sake of your goodness, Lord, I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. I flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble in his way. Have mercy on me, and for his sake grant me remission of all my sins. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Who is the man who fears the Lord? Him will he instruct in the way that he should choose. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Grab this Lord to us all. according to St. John, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, 
Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I, know, I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In a well-known folk tale from East Asia, there is a story of a man that is in the unfortunate position of being chased by a starving tiger and he runs for his life off of a short cliff. Thank goodness though he's able to hold onto a branch and hang on. So this man looks up and sees this hungry tiger wanting to devour him should he choose to climb up. And then he looks down and sees a second hungry tiger at the bottom of the cliff wanting to devour him should he choose to let go and drop. So he comes to the realization, I'm not getting out of this predicament alive. And as he realizes this, out of the corner of his eye he sees a wild strawberry. And he plucks it, he eats it, and he savors it as the most delicious thing he's ever eaten in his life. The moral of the story? Well, my best guess is, you know, you all, we all live, we'll all one day die, therefore enjoy life while you can. But there's some comfort, you know, if death is truly the end of everything, even if you have a terrible, lousy life where you miss out on things, when it's over, at least it is over. Or is it? Today's Gospel text tells us otherwise. Lazarus lived and he died, and that was not it. He rose again to bodily life. In fact, he didn't just raise again to bodily life. Consider he had been in the tomb for days. At this point, cellular decay, rot, had begun to sit into the corpse. Even Martha said to Jesus, Lord, he's been dead four days, there will be a stench. 
except that there wasn't. Jesus proved, uh, again, his divinity that he was God and the fact that he raised Lazarus from the dead. And Lazarus wasn't some zombie going, uh, uh. No, he was fully restored. The cellular decay, Jesus Christ reversed it. Lazarus didn't even have a smell on him. Not only can Jesus Christ give light, he can reverse cellular decay. Why? Because he's God. And of course, the death and resurrection of Lazarus is an important foreshadowing of our own Lord Jesus Christ's death and rising from the dead. In fact, between him and his friend Lazarus, there's only one key difference. Lazarus lived, died, rose again from the dead, then died a second time, and who was awaiting his second resurrection on the last day along with all of us. Whereas Jesus Christ lived, died, rose again from the dead, and now will never die again, ever. And in his resurrection, he imparts that resurrection to everyone who's ever lived, as everyone who has ever lived will rise again from the dead. Those of us that sit in faith to the resurrection of life, those of us who do not have sit in faith, well, they don't, won't like where they're going. But yes, everyone who's ever lived will rise again. And so, you realize that death is eternal. I'm sorry, that death is not eternal. That resurrection is the future and is eternal. This completely changes one's outlook on life. For example, let's say in the resurrection, you stay next to the person that killed you, the person that slandered you. You can turn to the person that killed you and say, Ah, you didn't do much, did you? I'm right here. And then turn to the person who slandered you and say, I'll never forget what I'll never ever forget what you said about me behind my back. Yeah. That's we see that completely changes um, our outlook on life. Oh, and think about this. All those questions you had in that Bible study about, you know, what was Moses thinking? What was Peter thinking? And so on. Well, guess what? Now you can go up to them and ask them anything you wanted to know. Just like it's, just like it's your uncle at Thanksgiving. Hey, uncle, uh, what was it like being in the army back in the um, whatever decade? Or what was it like when this happened or that happened? You'll be able to ask them. And you think of someone like, say, Peter. Did Jesus really make you, oh, say, the first pope with authority over the entire church? Well, you can hear Peter's honest feedback on what he thinks about that. The point I'm making is that our society and our world, our entire outlook on life is, it's not biblical. The default view is not correct. It's not, you live, you die, that's it, enjoy life while you can. Rather, it's, you live, you die, and then you'll be in the resurrection the last day. Life is truly eternal, death is temporary. That is the main point of Jesus Christ and his gospel. So then, is our life here in this moment, in this lifetime here, unimportant? Far from it. It is of the utmost importance. This life we have now is only given once. It's an exquisite, wonderful gift of God to us. God does not give it lightly. And we're here, so to speak, for the following reason. Our life right now is, in cosmic terms, a kindergarten. What do you mean? Well, the most important grade you can grow up is kindergarten. For it's in kindergarten, you learn to say please and thank you, to share, hold hands, and play nice with the other children. You learn how to act and do the right thing. If you don't learn that, it doesn't matter how smart you are. If you can't get along with others, you're going to have trouble down the line. So it is here with us. Yes, Jesus Christ died on the cross to forgive us our sins. All thanks be to God, and we are forgiven. We're forgiven for a purpose. For as Jesus taught, love the Lord your God with all your soul, heart, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. That is what we are in this world to learn. To know it not just in our head, but to learn it through the way we live our lives. So in the coming resurrection, what we'll be doing as a species, as a person, 
Your guess is as good as mine. Brother, we're in this life right now to learn how to be God's people in this life so we can pick it up where we left off in the resurrection. That is what Jesus is about, and that's what the story of Lazarus makes clear. So now that we are forgiven, now that we are the children of God quite literally, now we follow our Lord's example, and by the Holy Spirit, we are molded into the people our Lord would have us be. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Holy God, holy and most gracious Father, have mercy and hear us. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your saints shout for joy. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the ways of justice and truth. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, and the hopes of the poor shall not perish forever. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you, for I conclude with your son's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless you, defend you from all evil, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.